So if you're just getting into woodworking and you need a nice way to cross cut wide pieces or panels, a cross cut sled is really what you need. And have you ever thought about whether you wanted to make a one rail or a two rail type cross cut sled? Well, that's exactly what I want to talk about today. If you could only have one cross cut sled for your table saw, which would be better, a single rail or a double rail type system? So let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of each. So the advantage of a single rail sled is that it's smaller and more compact and of course it's lighter weight. So if it's something you're going to be huffing on and off of your table saw quite frequently, it might just have the advantage of being easier to use in that regard. But what are some of the other advantages of a single rail crosscut sled? For me, it's the ability to cut thick stock. There's no rail going all the way across the blade and that's really a key difference between the one rail and the two rail systems. As long as you build your sled from half inch thick material, you'll still have a really nice cutting capacity. It's basically the full three inches that you can raise the blade minus the thickness of your sled. That'll be your maximum thickness that you can handle on your table saw. My single rail sled can handle pieces about 32 inches long and that's great for most furniture building applications. Occasionally I want to cut something that's a little bit longer and for that I'll either use my larger sled or just head over to the chop saw. But hey, what are the disadvantages of this type of sled with just a single rail? And I think the main disadvantage is the fact that it doesn't support your off cuts. What I've done to get around this limitation with sleds built this way is to use a two cut approach. Basically you'll trim your workpiece to rough length which is within about an inch of finish length then reset your stop and go ahead and make your final cut. And by doing that, you'll maintain really good cut quality and you won't get any splintering as the off cut detaches from the workpiece. This one uses an Incra slider and the interesting thing there, it requires access holes so you can make adjustments topside. So the single rail sled I use on my saw stop and then I have a back to back setup with a Laguna Fusion F2 if you want to see the topic of how to set two table saws up back to back, we'll link up to that video and then I'll put it again at the end and I'll put it in the description box as well. So lots of resources there. If you just do some digging, you'll find a video topic on two table saws back to back. Now a two rail sled is a different animal entirely. It's going to be a lot larger and therefore heavier. And you actually have to build it from a thicker base material too. I recommend three quarter inch thick sheet good as the minimum thickness for the base of a two rail sled. And that's just because you're going to cut it right down the middle. And that of course means that you need a front fence and a rear fence. And that's part of what adds weight to a two rail system. Well, this is my X cut sled. You can search for a video on how to build this, but the basic idea is some of the areas have been removed to minimize weight of this large sled. And then the big difference is this cross bridge. It's actually made from metal threaded pipe in lieu of that wooden fence that typically sits on the back of most two rail crosscut sleds. This particular sled uses aluminum miter bars from Craig. I'll put those down in the description box, but the big thing here is that the capacity of this is a little bigger. I can get actually 37 inch of maximum cut length on this sled. And that is huge. Anytime I'm cutting a furniture part and I can cut it with a crosscut sled and I don't have to go over to the chop saw, that's a big advantage. I think I get better cut quality here and I would usually prefer to do my finished cross cutting with a sled. But the advantages you get with that sort of a sled are the fact that it supports your off cut. You can typically make them quite large for longer work pieces and wide for sheet good cuts like if you're making cabinets. There's inherently more stability because you have two tracks running in the parallel slots of your table saw, but that said, I've never had any issues with the single rail sled. One interesting disadvantage of the two rail sled is the fact that it can't handle that thick eight quarter stock. And that's simply because if you raise the blade all the way up to maximum height, you would actually start to cut into the top track on the front fence of the sled. And so if you ask yourself, well, if you could only have one sled in starting a new shop, would it be a one rail or a two rail type? And I do think the single rail system has a little bit of an advantage because it can handle any stock thickness. Now, as your shop develops, you may want to have both of these sleds at your disposal. 
Normally I have a dedicated dado blade set up on the fusion saw, but periodically I'll switch that over to use the two rail sled. Let's use this woodpecker's miter bar to show how the length of the miter bar really determines how wide of a panel you can cut. Now this is a 25 and a half inch miter bar. It's got some interesting features that make it I think more stable than some other models. But as you retract that, there's a point where you'll lose stability. And with the woodpeckers, it's right about there. You need about four inches engaging into the track in your saw for that to feel stable. So on this particular table saw, that gives you a 24 inch panel width capacity. Of course, that'll vary a little bit depending on the model of your saw. I would personally avoid short or shop made runners for table saw sleds. It's just too important of a component to skimp. Buy metal and get the longest runners that make sense for your setup. It does feel a little funny to pull this big sled up on the table saw to make small cuts. So for routine day-to-day -day stuff, you may be just a little bit better off with a smaller single runner sled. Still, the big sled makes nice clean cuts, and I'm usually much happier with this than the results I get at the chop saw. Upgrade your Craig flip stops with these Rockler four star rubber knobs or a larger diameter five star knob for an easily adjustable handle for your sled. If you're interested in seeing more on this back to back table saw setup that I use, we'll link up to that video. That's a good one to watch. In the meantime, I'll put down in the description box some links to the common accessories I use when I'm building these table saw sleds. Give me a thumbs up if you like this topic and do remember to subscribe to the Thoughtful Woodworker channel. Hey, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.